An Introduction to Qi. Qi can be understood as simply the energy that binds all our cells together. This energy is, in practice, mainly invisible unless it is specifically looked for. An example of this is in the ECG. Whilst the heart can be seen pumping easily enough, the energy driving this is only visible indirectly on a graph drawn as an ECG. Heart chi is particularly strong and also pulsatile, which is why it is relatively easy to detect. Equally, brain chi and muscle chi are also fairly easy to measure. What is less well known is that the embryo also uses electricity to guide its growth. Such electricity has been measured and even visualised and is increasingly accepted as the key controlling force of growth. Growth is the most important factor in how a single cell will develop into the trillion cellular wonder that is you or I. Embryological growth is the foundation for all our health. What this electricity does is instructs the cells in how to behave. In embryological growth, it is telling them when to divide and what into. This is Yuan Qi, what has been translated as source Qi, but is more accurately translated as original, and hence in context is embryological. The electricity, therefore, has information attached to it, a quality that means it is quantum in nature. This difference is the equivalence to the difference in energy moving down your power lines and the fine intelligent energy running down your internet connection. Thankfully, our understanding does not need to be quantum. Rather, we simply need to understand the rules of how qi flows and what it then does within the organs. Qi flows within the channel system, what is described as the Zhuang Lua. The ancient Chinese described how qi flow was like water, and this analogy also works for electricity. Within this, the channel system is like the water pipes or the electrical wires. The mechanics of qi flow will be discussed in later lectures, but now it is just important to understand what qi is doing. Qi organises and instructs, moving between cells at an individual level and then building and organising to move at an organ level. As it does this, it creates different patterns of energy in much the same way as different vibrations will create patterns in water. In the heart and brain, this energy is pulsatile or flickering like a flame, but in the other organs it tends to create subtle electric pumps that help the organ function, and in the muscles it gives them strength. The result is the animating force, the energy that keeps us alive, is cheap.